My name is William Justice, and today I have two more really easy to use fusion effects for DaVinci Resolve 17. I created these effects for myself to use in my own videos, but I also wanted to share them with you so that you could use them in your own projects. The first effect is a timeline mask. I kind of showed a little bit of it in one of my earlier videos, um, but I fixed it up a little bit and made it a lot more flexible. The second effect is a zoom highlight effect, um, when I'm going to use this in some of my tutorials for you know, highlighting different areas of the screen where I'm making adjustments and things like that. They're both really easy to install and can be used directly from the effects area on the timeline. You just take it and drag it right on the clip that you want to change. This is going to be a pretty quick video. I'm going to show you the new effects, how they work, what the different options are, how to install them, and then I'm going to take you a little bit behind the scenes. Also, um, if you saw my last video about the, uh, the slide-in panel as well as the zoom, I've uh, updated both of these so that they'll now work a lot better. They're up on my website, billjustice.com, along with these new effects. The first effect is a simple shape mask. I have a uh, circle ellipse shape or a square rectangle shape. You can choose between both of them. Masks let you set which part of a clip is transparent and which part is visible. They can cut holes in videos so that you can see whatever clip is beneath them on the timeline. This is more of an experiment. I know that you can do some masking and things like this from the color page, but it is kind of convenient to be able to do it directly from the timeline. Eventually, I think these type of masks will be something that's uh, directly built into Resolve. Okay, let's take a quick look at how the masking effect works. So we have a clip of me talking and then a blue abstract clip. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the clip of me talking and put it on top of the blue clip. Now you could use the cropping to trim some of the left, right, and top bottom to be able to see what's below. But the, the masking effect is gonna give you a few more options. So let's uh, clear this out here. And we're gonna to go to the effects library. You're gonna to wanna to choose the effects, the toolbox, and then effects right here. And down below these effects, you'll see fusion effects. So scroll down and you'll see my new effects here. The, uh, the one we're gonna look at is the, it's called Just Shape Mask. And all we need to do is take that and drag it right onto the clip of me talking. So what this is, it set up a mask around me talking. Anything outside of that mask is gonna be hidden, so you're gonna be able to see through this clip right here. So let's go through some of the options. To access the options for the fusion effects, you click a clip, you're gonna click this little effects icon here, and make sure you click fusion, and you're gonna see the effect. This one's called just shape mask. The first option is the shape. You can choose a circle or a rectangle. To make adjustments on this, you can choose the width and height down here from the, for the rectangle and the ellipse, like this. If you switch it to the circle, you can change them right there, reset that. But it's easier if you come over to here and you can change the overlay in this viewer. And we're gonna choose Fusion Overlay. And this is gonna put some of the overlay controls that you would normally get inside the Fusion tab inside the Timeline Editor. So we have the circle selected, so we can just take the circle and adjust the size and move it around to see which part of the clips we want to be masked or not. Same thing with the rectangle. You can just adjust it to create whatever size you want. Let's put it back on the circle. The level is the level of the mask. The soft edge adds blending outside that, so let's click off of this. You can kind of see where it's blending into the background for the mask. Let's put the soft edge back. We can adjust a border width to give it a little more. If we turn off the solid, we actually can have a, uh, we can have a circle shape or a rectangle with a border around it. All right, let's put it back on solid. So here's our mask. We can invert the mask so that everything inside of the shape is transparent and everything outside of the shape is what you see. So you just click invert and we get the inversion of the mask. The same things apply with the, uh, the soft edge and the positioning. And let's change the size here. We can also adjust the angle. So if you wanted to adjust the angle of this, you could do that as well. Let's put it back to the rectangle and reset the angle. Last option here is a corner radius. So let's bring down the soft edge. So if you kind of wanted a, the rounded corner look on your mask, you could do that as well. So real simple to do, you just put it on there and you can invert it, flip it around. Um, you can even put multiple masks on here, which is kind of interesting. It's, it gets a little weird when you do it, but it, it, it does work if you wanted to do it. You, I think you have to invert both of them. Let's, uh, let's try that. Let's put another one on here. What's uh, just shape mask? Drag it on there. And you'll see that we have another mask down, he down here. And let's invert that one. And there we go. We have two different areas that are using the masking. 
sometimes it does get a little bit weird where if you make a change, it's not going to show up in the viewer. Um, and if that happens, sometimes adjusting these settings or coming into the regular inspector and adjusting the position a little bit, moving the clip around, that causes it to uh, uncache and you'll, you'll be able to see the changes that you're making. Now let me show you how I use some masking to create the effects at the beginning of this video. So we have this uh, clip of me talking here. I'm going to hit Alt, click and drag up to create a copy of it. I'm going to move that up to the third video track. Let's disable this track and we're going to add an effect to this one below it here. We're going to go to Effects Library, hit Open FX, and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And we have this waviness effect. So we're going to take the waviness and drop it onto this clip. We're gonna take this clip and drag it up to create another copy of it. For the waviness, we're gonna hit the uh, effects icon there and we're gonna set the phase to 0.5. That's gonna put it in the opposite phase from the first one. All we need to do is just change the blending mode. Composite mode, we're gonna set it to darken and that's gonna have the two layers mixed together and we get this effect. So I wanted my face to be able to be seen. That's where we're gonna use the mask. So let's enable this top layer and we're gonna add a mask. So on the effects library, hit effects. Scroll down to Shape Mask, drop that on, and we're gonna set it to a circle and position it right where my head is. You could use this to add any kind of effects that you wanted to in the background. Boost up the soft edge, and here's what we have. All right, the other effects were really easy to do. We're gonna go to the Media Pool, and we're just gonna choose one of these images. We're gonna drag it on here. You see it's right on top of my clip. So what I did was I added a mask to each of these. So we'll go to the effects library, add the shape mask, go to the effects, change it to a circle, bump up the soft edge a little bit, and we're gonna do the fusion overlay. And what I did is I took it and dragged it down to the corner, made it really small. I set a keyframe on the width and height, moved over a few frames, and took the circle and made it bigger to have it expand through. The next thing was we're gonna find another image. We're gonna drag that right on there. So right click on the first clip and say copy. Go to the second clip, the clip on top, right click and say paste attributes. We're just gonna go ahead and paste all the attributes. That's gonna paste the mask as well. So at this point, what we can do is we can take the position and we're just gonna move it to the top right. So have these trees coming in from the bottom left and these coming in from the top right. And then I did the same thing with uh, to put my face in the middle. We'll just go ahead and copy this clip that has the mask on it. Let's move this over. The second effect I've created is a highlight effect. This is something you can use to draw your viewer's attention to a certain area of the screen. For example, do you know what I want you to look at? Maybe I want you to look at this over here, or maybe I want you to look at this. This effect has a lot of different options. You can change the size, color. It has comes in different shapes. So there's a circle ellipse version and a rectangle version. You can change the border size. And there's even some options to adjust the animation so you can create some different effects. If you enjoy my videos, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any comments or questions or any feedback on some of my videos or what I've been doing, um, just let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to hear from you and I will definitely get right back to you. Okay, the next effect I wanted to show you is the highlight zoom effect. To use it, it kind of works in the same way. We'll go to the effects library, click effects here in the toolbox. What we're gonna do with, for this one is you, you can add it directly to a clip, but it's a little more flexible if you take an adjustment clip and put that down right there because this is gonna let you move it around and adjust the timing pretty easily. Then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna see um, just highlight circle and just highlight rect. So to use this, if we wanna put a highlight rectangle somewhere in this video, we take the just highlight rect and drag it onto our adjustment clip. And that's gonna put our highlight spot. Now, you need to make sure that the fusion overlay is selected. That's gonna allow us to make some adjustments. We can take it and move it wherever we want. So if we wanted to look at the little clock there, we could do that. You can grab it and adjust the size. So let's go through the different options here. Um, obviously, this is the adjustment clip. So if you wanted it to be come in a little bit earlier or later, you can adjust the timing with this. There's an animation that comes in and there's an animation when it leaves the screen. Let's uh, go through the different configuration options here. We'll put back on the fusion overlay and put it right in the middle. In the inspector, we're gonna click the effects icon. So there's a lot of options here. To, this is gonna give you a lot of flexibility. There's a level which sets the level of the effect. Let's uncheck it. So this is the level of the effect. There's a border width. So if you want it thicker or thinner, you can do that. Obviously you can adjust the position with these controls here or with the fusion overlay by clicking this icon and dragging it around, adjusting the size. You can adjust the angle of the highlight area. This option here is a zoom. What it does is it actually zooms in on whatever's highlighted. So you can adjust this 
and it will make whatever's inside the box bigger. Let's reset the angle here. So if we want to make these uh, pencils over here bigger, we could do that. You can even actually make things a little bit smaller, which kind of creates an interesting effect. The next option is the background blend. So you see that it's, it's, everything's darker outside of the highlight. You can make it a lot darker, or you could um, you make it all the way black, and we'll be able to change the color in a second. You could take it all the way down so that there's no dark area. And then there's a uh, soft edge that we can add. Put this in. Um, what we'll do is we'll take the border all the way down and make this really dark. And you can see how, what that soft edge does. So it's just kind of another way to highlight or show specific areas of your videos. So all, the, all these properties are animatable, so you can create some effects and transitions between things if you'd like. Let's put the border back up a little bit. Okay, so this is the uh, rectangle options, the width, height, and then there's a corner radius. So if you want it more rounded or squared off, you could do that. There's a border color. So if we wanted to have the border red, so we'll put it back to white. By default, there's a little bit of a glow effect. I'm gonna show you how that works in a second. Um, animation, so this is the start zoom. So what happens is you see that the rectangle, it starts out big and then it zooms in. Well, you could start it out small. So we'll have this, the rectangle start zoomed all the way out and you see it's gonna start small and come up like that. So you have a couple different options there. We'll start to zoom out a little bit. Frames in and frames out. This is how long the transition for the for the zoom in or zoom out of the rectangle happens. So if we move this out like this, it's gonna take 63 frames to go from all the way zoomed out to zoomed in on your highlight point. The default is 15 frames to go from the zoomed out to the zoomed in position. Now you can also change the effects here. This is the, what I'm using, I'm using the anim curves for this. First in out is the beginning here of the rectangle coming into the highlight point. And the second in out is the rectangle leaving the highlight point. Let's uh, set the in out to none and then maybe want it to do a bounce. With this set, the rectangle is going to kind of have a bounce effect when it comes in. And with this one, we could uh, set it to, let's say, back and none, and it's going to kind of, it's going to have that back and then bounce out. So a lot of different options here with the animations. You can adjust the timing and as the curves as well. Okay, border effect, this is where you're going to be able to do some different things. We can set a soft edge on our border. If you wanted to, you could animate the position, kind of have a spinning thing. You'd have to do a little animation on this. I thought about putting that in there by default, but it was just gonna be a little bit too much. Down here, these are a glow settings. So we can have it glow a lot. These are the, this is the gain and the glow size. And if you don't want any glow, you can just take these and turn them all the way down. There's a little bit of glow by default. If you wanna change your glow color, you can adjust the red scale, green scale, and blue scale. Kind of have a, uh, a red one, or we can make it kind of yellow with that. You can adjust these, kind of get some different kind of a neon -y glow effect, which makes it really nice for highlighting specific areas. So the last option down here is the background color, and this goes along with the background blend. By default, it's a black, but we could set this to whatever color we wanted. It could be white or even a red. Let's, see, let's make it kind of a green to match our, uh, our neon glow there. Once you get this set up, say you have a highlight effect that you like and you want to keep using it, you don't really need to go through and adjust all these options every time. What you can do is go to the media pool and take your adjustment clip and just drag it right in. And it's all saved and ready to go for you. So let's say if we're on this clip right here and we wanted to uh, highlight part of it, we take the adjustment clip, drag it in, and we have the highlight ready to go. We can adjust the timing of when things happen with the adjustment clip. And then this one, if you wanted to change it, you still go back in here and we can adjust it however we want. Now this is just one of them. The other one works exactly like this. It's a circle effect. So I'll show you it real quick. You take an adjustment clip and drag that in in the effect from the effects area. We're gonna scroll down and you're gonna see the uh, just highlight circle. Let's take that, drag it on to this adjustment clip and we have a circle there. We can do the same thing. If we enable the fusion overlay, we can, let's click the clip, enable the fusion overlay. We can move it around and adjust the size and the animation is defaulting to do that. Sometimes I've seen some things where the caching doesn't work quite right. I'm, I'm assuming this is a this is probably a, a DaVinci Resolve 17 issue. They're kind of working through it. it's beta software, so it takes a little while to get everything just right. If that does happen, you can adjust the clip slightly by moving it around a little bit, adjust the timing, and usually that gets it to fix itself. Okay, so how do you get these effects installed? It's really easy. Just download some files and you need to copy them into a specific folder and you're ready to go. So you can get the files from my website, buildjustice.com. There's gonna be a graphic here for this new video, or you can click on generator downloads and auto timeline effects. 
And this is going to take you to the effects that I set up for my last video, as well as the new one. So I had the, uh, the slide in panel and the auto zoom. And now we have this highlight and the shape mask. So to download them, all you need to do is click the download button. So let's see, we'll download the, uh, the rectangle and the circle. When you click those, you get a settings file that you download, and this is what you use in Resolve to add the effect. There's also this buy me a coffee link. It's definitely not required at all, but if you feel like it, you can buy me a coffee. I would appreciate it. But either way, I hope when you download the effects that you make some great videos with them. So now that we have the effects downloaded, let's get them into Resolve. So click anywhere in the timeline here and hit Fusion. Once you're in Fusion, you wanna bring up the effects library, click Edit Templates, and then Effects. And this is gonna take you to the place where you add all your effects. Click these little three dots and hit Show Folder. So you can see these are the effects that I have installed already. And these are the effects that we just downloaded. So all you would need to do is highlight these and copy them into the Effects folder. Then Restart Resolve and you're ready to go. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you wanna get the effects, you can download them from BillJustice.com and drag them into the effects area and restart resolve and you'll be all ready to go. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know. If you enjoy my videos, please like the video, subscribe and comment below and let me know how I'm doing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.